Hello friends. Today I have a compilation video. Old videos that I put together full of Valentine romantic rustic DIYs for your home decor. Let's get started. Okay, so I have this little sign from Dollar Tree that obviously I got in the fall and I'm going to use the paper that I showed you there. I didn't show you that I painted all of these beads on camera because it's pretty, you know, easy but I painted them white and then I'm painting over this sign white and I had to do several coats to cover up those words. And I just kept painting over them until I couldn't see them anymore because we're going to put that tissue paper on there and it's thin. Now I'm measuring to see how big the inside of the, the box, the shadow box is. And I'm gonna measure that on my tissue paper and I'm just gonna cut it. I didn't even realize I was cutting two pieces, but that's good because just in case I mess one up, I'll have a spare. Now I'm putting some Mod Podge on these two, three little hearts, a good healthy coat, and I'm gonna let it dry completely. I'm also gonna put Mod Podge in that little shadow box. I don't know if I show that on camera or not. And then there was this really pretty blue, blue is my favorite color, um, tissue paper that was in with the heart tissue paper. And so I'm gonna make each one of these hearts blue and this turned out so pretty. I love the way these, these turned out. So I'm doing that same, same tissue paper method with the uh, Mod Podge with the iron. Now I'm gonna use the sandpaper in a downward motion to remove the excess tissue paper. And I don't mind if this um, sands the edge a little and makes it look a little rustic with this uh, particular decor piece. Now I'm applying a thick hefty coat of Mod Podge but an even coat. I'm doing it evenly and now it's completely dry. And I decided I wanted to iron that just in case it um, I don't want it to wrinkle. There was a little wrinkle in it. So now I'm going to put it in here. It was a little bit short on one of the edges but I'm okay with that because it's a white background and the tissue paper has a white background. So I'm just taking my little iron, pressing it down. I didn't even use parchment paper on it, and it worked great. So um, I've always been afraid not to use it, but I forgot to grab it, and it ended up working out great. Then I'm just going to glue these three little hearts down in a row like that, and this one is done. Let me know what you think about this one. I think it's a cute little decor piece for Valentine's Day. Do you decorate for Valentine's Day? I always want to because... After Christmas, the house seems so empty, so I put up some Valentine's decor. Okay, this next one is one of those chunky hearts from Dollar Tree. I bought a bunch of them a few years ago, and I'm still using them. And then I'm going to use this really pretty red strapped metallic tissue paper. And this other little heart... Uh, got out of my stash that I got at Dollar Tree. They come several in a package and they are just so versatile and so fun to use. So I gave it one coat of white chalk paint and now I'm giving this a nice thick, you can see how much Mod Podge I'm using on this because it doesn't, um, it's not white. And then I ironed it on. I didn't show you that whole process because I've showed you that several times already. And then I used my X-Acto knife to clean up the edge and now I'm gluing this white heart in the middle and I just love that it's almost like a filigree with all those little hearts in the middle and then I have this little trim ribbon that I think I got this at Target several years ago and I've just and it was on clearance after Valentine's Day and I've just been using it and using it and I just I love it it's really soft um, and I'm trying to tie this bow and my fingers are just full of paint and I kind of look like a hot mess about right now. But anyway, I, I finally get it done. Get this bow tied. I didn't leave my little tail string long enough. So that was the problem with that. So leave your tail string long enough. And I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue right there. And put that little bow right there. And I think that's awfully cute. And it'll stand up by itself. Or you could put a hanger on the back if you wanted to hang it. Okay, I got this little love shelf sitter at Dollar Tree. 
and it had a cute little pink flower on it, but we're gonna take that off. And I do take that glue off of there too, but there were some places on this that weren't completely even painted. And then it had some scuffed up marks, probably from where I've stored it. And so I just went through and gave it one coat of um, chalk paint, white chalk paint on the front and the sides. And I can't remember if I did the back or not. Surely I did because I usually finish out everything. And so here we go. It's all painted nice and white. Now I'm going to take these beautiful, I, I, I was so excited. I was calling this romantic. So I'm taking that lid because it's the size of the center of that um, circle, the O. And I'm going to layer these pieces of tissue paper with the patterned floral and the pink and the blue and just layer it up. And then I'm going to find my center and I'm going to put a staple right in the center of that. And now I'm going to draw a circle. I don't know that this is completely necessary because I didn't even get the circle in the center. I didn't get the staple in the center of the circle. So I didn't really even go by the circle. I just started cutting. You want the, the staple in the center of the circle. Now I'm just moving the paper, not my scissors, to make the edges curvy. This is totally optional. But you will see when I do the making a flower, by the way, um, that it looks, it just looks more, almost kind of like a peony or something if the edges are ruffled. So you're just going to pick each layer up and pinch it up to the middle. This was kind of difficult because it was small. My fingers were really dry. My hands are so dry right now in this lovely cold weather we're having. And so I had a little bit of water I had sprayed in that lid. That's why I keep reaching up there and touching that lid because with my fingers a little bit damp, it was easier to separate that tissue paper. So I'm just pinching those up and then fluffing it up and it looks so cute. But I decided that's not what I wanted to put in the middle of that. I thought I did. Well, actually I was going to and then I had another idea and then I decided I was going to see which one looked best. So I cut a circle out the size that would fit on the O. And now I'm going to draw a heart. So you draw half the heart and cut it so you have a symmetrical heart. Everybody knows that. Okay. Checking to make sure it fits. It fits. Now I'm going to take this Alain's Tacky Glue, put it on my little piece of parchment paper, and then I have all these little pieces of this tissue paper that I cut up in tiny little pieces. We did this in elementary school, y'all, and we did this with a pencil on the eraser part and wrap the tissue paper around it, dab it on the glue, and then put it on our paper. So let me know in the comments below if you ever did this in school. I love to do this. Um, so I did this on this all over this little heart, and it, I think it turned out adorable. Um, just all the different mix of colors and how they blended. I'm using a skewer to do this, um, you know, the flat end of it and because a pencil was too big it may it was it wouldn't even fit in the middle of my little pieces of paper so here we go putting in the last few little pieces and just make sure that you get them right up next to each other and oh it's so cute i did put a few more extras around the edges because i didn't really want to see the white cardboard but my background's white on my decor piece so it's not going to show that much and I decided I loved this way better than the flower. They were both cute, but that heart, that heart is cute. Let me know which one you like better, the heart or the flower. I don't know, I like them both, but I went with the heart. Now I'm taking this little, it's a, actually a calligraphy marker, but it's the only marker I had that was the right color pink that I wanted. And I'm just making some little squiggles and some little dots all the way around this because I thought it looked like it needed to be outlined. So you also could just distress the edges a little if you wanted to, but I wanted this cute little fun whimsical look to it. Here we go, quick and simple. I have this little um, chunky plaque I got from Dollar Tree. I have my mixed paint that I mixed myself I call boho white 
I can put in the description box below what I mixed together. I believe I got these at Michael's last year after Valentine's on clearance. There's a lot of different um, designs to choose from. So I'm just going to pick the three that I want to go on it. I've already pre-painted it, like I said. Or these other two hearts I had um, left over from some hearts that I bought. You can buy heart wooden hearts at Hobby Lobby, at Dollar Tree. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them relatively cheap. So I'm just going to leave them natural because that's the look I'm going for. I'm just going to put a little hot glue on and stick them down. Make sure they're on there good. You know, there's some holes in there, so it's kind of hot. So I got this ribbon at Dollar Tree. It's just a really soft cotton lace. I'm going to put a little hot glue around there, and I'm going to tap it down, and it's kind of hot. And it's kind of sticky. So I think that I'm going to just go ahead and do that. And yeah, it's kind of hot. So I'm going to get this little pink rubber finger that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. It's a little silicone fingertip. And it works really nice. I picked this little picture frame clipboard up at Michael's. I like these little slats in here. I was going to try to take off this clip, but it didn't screw off, and I didn't want to mess it up. And so I just decided to leave it on there, paint around it. So now I'm going to tape off this third little slat. because those little grooves it's sometimes hard to keep the paint out of them so I'm gonna put this painters tape on there I'm gonna be really careful to get it all nice and down in the groove and get my tape all unstuck from itself but make my line all nice and straight get that all poked down in the little groove Now I didn't, this is that, I didn't get it close where you could actually see, but I'm going to use these little favor cups. I love to use these little paper favor cups to put paint in so my paint doesn't dry out by leaving the bottle open. And I'm going to get in there and I'm going to be really careful. You know, it's the magic of YouTube that we can speed it up. I'm really going slow. <laughs> but I'm going to be really careful and get in there and paint this this really beautiful I believe it's called rose it's a paint that I picked up at Michaels just an acrylic paint okay so pink and gray there you go so I'm gonna paint this little heart with the with the pink and I'm gonna glue it to that now add a little extra detail now why I didn't add those on before I painted 
have no idea. Can't tell you. But we're gluing them on now. So now we get to paint those gray. Oh, first I'm going to paint the back gray. Nope, I'm going to paint the front gray. I don't think I know what I'm going to do. Nope, I'm going to glue the heart on. A little E6000 because sometimes the hot glue, you know, you've tried to hot glue glass or, or metal and it doesn't really stay on that good. So we'll put the E6000 on there and, and that's going to make it hold long term. But that hot glue will help it stay in place until that E6000 dries. Put a little hot glue on the back. Just, you know, get it nice and secure. Oh, the magic of YouTube. The beads are painted. Now I'm taking my little chippy brush and doing that little dry brushing that I love to do. Just put some paint. I'm using um, white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. I think it's called Linen White. can't remember. But I just put a little on that chippy brush and then I wipe most of it off on the table that's covered with paper. You tell me in the comments below what style you think this is. Could be farmhouse. It put, if you added a little bit of lace or something to it, beads or something, you could make it a little country shabby chic. And here's my little John 316. He's our valentine. Gave his life for us. There we go. There's your finished product. So next we're going to make a garland. Now, got all this styrofoam and I have this hot knife. I'm going to tell you about this hot knife. Natalie Callahan over at Design to the Nines, who is awesome, told me about this hot knife. Well, she didn't actually tell me. She was doing it on her channel and I just happened to be watching. So what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but I'm going to trace this heart on this styrofoam. This styrofoam came in a box as packing, so it was just free. It's just extra stuff I had around. It's just a heart. A little wooden heart I had. Now this thing gets hot. You're going to see it steaming here in a minute. See that steam? So you do not want to touch that thing. It is hot. I want you to see how this, oh, it glides through here so good. But you have to keep it straight up and down. Don't tilt it one way or the other. Otherwise, the edges won't be straight. They'll, you know, some of mine I got a little bit off, but, you know, you have to keep it straight up and down. And so, you just poke it in and then just run it around the edge. Oh my goodness, it's so satisfying. It's just like, you know, cutting butter with a hot knife. This is a hot knife. That's what it's called. It's called a hot knife. Or a hot pen. I think it's called a hot pen. And just like that, bam, you have the cutest little heart. So Natalie was making her studio craft room. And she did a sign that's behind her when she's talking out of foam and painted it. And she used a hot knife and she was telling all about it. And she inspired me to get one and to play around with it. And I was kind of afraid of it at first. But you should have a healthy fear of it because it's really hot. So I'm going to paint these little hearts with this same pink I've been using in every project this Valentine's and it put the, it paints really good one coat and done okay now we're gonna add our pom-poms and our tassels to our garland I have bought this pom-pom maker off of Amazon where else and it works really good but I stumbled upon a girl making pom-poms on YouTube and if I can find that video I'll link it as well. Now this yarn came from Dollar Tree so very inexpensive. I'm going to show you how to make this tassel. So easy. Just wrap it around your hand 
or you can use a piece of cardboard or anything depending on how big you want it these are small tassels so you want your string to start at the top bottom and end at the bottom and you're going to cut another little piece off string it through the top I'm not going to be explaining it very good but it's a good thing you have a video too okay string it through the top through that top the top loops gather up all those loops and then you're going to tie a knot and tie it really tight and then tie it again so it doesn't come undone there we go and then I always pull them all straight down and get them straight down okay now cut you off another little length and lay it down and just a little bit from the top we're gonna tie it because and, and leave a leave a tail because you're gonna wrap it around so tie it you know it's a little hard to tie stuff when you have long fingernails they are a nuisance sometimes but they come in handy sometimes being a hairstylist they come in very handy because they help me be able to pick the hair up and do hair with long nails so here we go wrapping that around wrap it around wrap it around and then when we get to the end we'll just tie it I think I kind of lost my string that I was supposed to tie it to so I just found a loose string to tie it to and it worked so with the yarn ones they're pretty forgiving if you do it with twine they're not quite as forgiving because you know they're stiff the, the twine is a little more stiff but they make super cute tassels as well but this this yarn is very forgiving okay, so once you get that tied in a double knot you can't see what I'm doing there get that tied up oh, then I cut those little pieces off that were hanging out okay then we're gonna pull pull it all down get them all pulled down so they're kind of all the same length and then you're gonna cut all those loops sometimes I can get the scissors through and cut them all at once and sometimes they're all turned every which direction and I just stick it in there cut them all and then you have all those little loose ones well then sometimes it needs a haircut because they're not all the same length so you just voila there you go see it did you see how that happened if you didn't the good thing is you can hit that little spot and rewind it for 10 seconds and figure it out ta-da so in case you don't know how to sew, when you're sewing, you have to leave that little tail that I left out there. So you need your, your long string, however long you want your garland to be. That's how long that string needs to be. So we're going to start with a, I'm going to start with a tassel. You start with whatever you want to on your own garland. You know, it's all about what you want it to look like. And I am going to cut those long gray strings off the top. So put it on and then we're going to pull it all the way to the end. Oh yeah, I forgot to cut that little piece of masking tape off. That's not going to go through anything. I just have to make sure I don't lose that little tail hang that's in by my needle, by the, by the eye of the needle. So I'm just going to continue to feed these on in a pattern that I think looks cute and I'm um, using my needle nose pliers to go ahead and pull that needle through because um, it was kind of hard to pull through there I cannot live without my needle nose pliers and just put that needle right straight through the middle of those pom-poms straight through the middle of that styrofoam heart and oops wasn't straight through let's try that again there you go pull it through and this little garland is just so simple and so cute. And here's the finished product. I don't really have anywhere really good to hang it, but I am going to show you where I did hang it. 
So there it is on the back of my little bench. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. One of the first verses I taught my kids and my grandkids and any little kids that are in the car with me for any amount of time, they get to learn that verse. If you're new here, my name is Kendra. You're watching Late Night Creations. I'm glad that you decided to click on this video because it's full of great DIYs. Be sure that you hit the thumbs up and like this video, subscribe, and drop a comment. A simple emoji will do, just to let me know that you're enjoying this video. Let's get back to crafting. This first heart is so cute and so adorable, so easy and quick. I just took this Dollar Tree heart. Um, it's a chunky one, it'll sit up by itself. And so this is the first one I'm gonna show you. Super easy, anybody could do it. Now I peeled off the front paper. It's just like a pay piece of paper that's stuck on there. It's not even really painted on there. And it was really easy to pull off. The whole thing came off in one piece. And I'm showing you right there how easily it came off. And so it left a little bit of a paper side to that. So I'm going to use that as the back because I like the backs of my projects finished. The sides were already painted red. It's going to match our paper. No need to paint that. Um, sometimes I use Mod Podge to put the paper on, but I didn't want to do that this time. So I'm going to use these Amazon uh, glue sticks. Glue sticks I get off Amazon. They work really nicely. So we're going to trace the heart you're going to see that i didn't place it on there right i cut it out i had to recut it because there kind of is a front and a back to these i'm telling you to cut on the outside of your line rather than the inside unless you want to paint the heart you want to paint the heart red or a color that's in the paper whatever paper you're using then if you don't get it just perfect then it it's not a big deal I didn't want to take the time to paint this one because I wanted this to be a simple and easy one. So this part did not match up because it's not a perfectly symmetrical heart. So now I'm trying to figure out which side and which way because I'm a little challenged with this kind of thing. So you'll see me tracing it again and this time it works good. So I'm just cutting that out. Super simple. I love doing paper crafts. I love scrapbook paper. I have a real weakness when I go down that aisle at Hobby Lobby or anywhere that has paper. I love the colors. So now we're going to glue this piece down on here. Now I use a lot of glue stick and I love the purple ones because you can see exactly where you already have the glue. This stuff dries really fast also. So I put a ton on there. I teach Sunday school and we use these glue sticks a lot in class when we do our crafts. And I tell those kids, just put a lot. This is your chance to use a lot of glue. So I take a lot of time trying to get this just perfect on here. And luckily the glue doesn't, you know, it's a little bit repositionable, but you have to be pretty quick with it. So I line it up just right, get it all lined up on there, and then just press it down really nicely and firmly. You can see I'm like really being a little pedantic about that, but I'm a little extra, but 
my crafts always turn out really cute. So there we go. Pressing down really hard, really hard, apparently. Um, not really pressing as hard as it looks, but just getting it all nice and smoothed out. And then I'm going to show you a little trick with my X-Acto knife. I have this favorite one, but uh, apparently the handle broke on it right when I was trying to use it. So we'll just use this other one that has a brand new blade in it. You can just trim around the edge and it comes off really nice and, and crisp. Um, I also have a technique using sandpaper that you can just sand down on it. I really didn't want to sand on my red paint. I use this from Dollar Tree, the sanding block, and when I kind of ruin it, then I just use my sandpaper from my sander and I just hold it on there and it fits really nice. So you can just kind of sand down around the edges and it'll make it nice and crisp. But I didn't really want to do that too much because I didn't want to sand that red paint off there. I'm going to use my little ladybug vacuum and vacuum up that dust so it doesn't get all over everything. Okay, now it's time to put a little bow on, do the finishing touch. You can pick any color ribbon that, that matches. I just thought since there was a little black in that and it's looking a little vintage that I would just use this black. Yep, I'm going to save that little cardboard circle because I have a whole little small tote, plastic tote full of them. Because one of these days, I actually have used them in crafts before. It's just making a simple bow, wrapping it around. And this is pretty self-explanatory on bows. I spend a lot of time making the bow just perfect, though. I, I probably should not be so, oh, you know, that's just how I am. So there we go. Put a little bit of hot glue on there. Stick that sucker down on there, and voila, there we go. Sits up by itself. You could put a hanger on the back if you wanted to hang it on the wall or not. So here we go, number two. Same chunky heart, and we're just going to peel that off just like we did the first one. And we're going to use the smooth side, which is actually the back side, just because I don't want to have to sand all that paper off. Now I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum white linen chalk paint. If I can get it open, okay, uh, reminding y'all I have a trash can down there in the floor. I'm not actually putting trash in my floor or getting my floor all dirty. So we are going to give this a good coat of paint all around this on the sides and the chalk paint covers pretty good so I did two coats just because I wanted it covered good because a little later I'm gonna put those shiplap stripes on there and sand it tiny bit so I didn't want the white to come off too much so good stripes on there I mean good paint good good oh man here we go Okay, got a little spackling from Dollar Tree, and it was a little dried out, so I just squirted a little water in there, stirred it up, and it works just fine. So don't throw it away if it's a little bit dried up. I personally like to use wood filler better than this when I'm going to stain. If you're going to paint over it, it's not really a big deal, but... I am going to stain this and yeah, it, it doesn't stain over that spackling really good. I'm not really staining it, I'm using the glaze, but it didn't it didn't cover it really good, but we're layering several things together, so it's not a big deal. So the both hearts, both of these hearts that I'm using, I'm gonna use this glaze from Folk Art. And it's, it looks like a stain. That's, that's why I was saying a stain while ago. Because it just looks like a stain if you just put it on there. Sometimes I put it on, wipe it off a little bit. Sometimes I just paint it on and leave it on. So this little heart was in a tray of hearts. I got it Michael's last year after Valentine's Day on clearance. Or maybe it was Hobby Lobby. I can't remember. So now I'm going to put this on there. And I did sand it down just a tiny bit but it didn't it didn't even really need it that that um spackling comes off pretty easily so i'm just putting a thin coat of this on and it depends on how dark you want it if you want to leave it that dark that's fine i kind of wanted to wipe mine off a little bit so it wasn't quite so dark you can see there a little bit where i put that spackling and it didn't want to 
cover good and I'm trying to add an extra coat. It dries really fast. I'm just trying to add an extra coat. Put some little lines in it and then I'm going to dab it a little bit. But it turned out fine because, like I said, when we layer these uh, all these little hearts together on top of each other, you don't really even notice that. So it's no big deal. Now this, I'm going to show you now how to, with this little galvanized, I pulled that off of something else from Dollar Tree last year. So if you don't have one of those, you can always take a cookie sheet, these disposable cookie sheets from Dollar Tree. These are amazing. You're going to see me use these in crafts a lot. Um, just cut this part out that I'm showing you, and I have a piece left over here. I'm going to show you how I did this. Charmin over at Fixin' Tube showed me this, a lot of things to do with this. She didn't show me this technique, but she showed me a lot of techniques to use with this, these cookie sheets. So uh, these have kind of lines in them already. Not really lines, but dots. And so I'm using them as lines. So I'm pressing down. You could use a Sharpie marker. Sometimes I use my Sharpie marker. You can just press down and make grooves. And then once you've made grooves on every other line, then you're going to flip it over and make lines in the opposite every other groove. Make grooves. You're making grooves. So it's going to look galvanized. So just keep pressing and making grooves on the front and then the back and the front and the back. And then it'll, you'll have that galvanized look. And then you can take whatever shape you're going to make, your heart or whatever, and you can just trace it around on your your new galvanized metal and just cut it out and it cuts out really nicely it's easy to do with just a pair, simple pair of craft scissors so yes my friend over at Fixin Two turned me on to doing crafts with these cookie sheets and you can get a lot of crafts done out of a one dollar or dollar twenty five cookie sheet so now my I keep filling up that heart to make sure it's getting dry. So I'm going to glue my hearts together to layer them. I'm using my Sure Bonder hot glue gun. Love that thing. And my little silicone finger to keep myself from getting hot glue burns because, oh, that is not fun. So the, the galvanized heart I had had a chunk of wood on the back because it was raised so if you want to raise yours you can get this foam tape at Dollar Tree you can just cut you off a little piece it's double stick I use this on a lot of projects I absolutely love it or those little dots those little round dots are also double stick and they can add a little bit of height to your project that that roll of tape is a little bit thicker so it'll make it stand up a little bit more so now we're going to just draw some lines I just eyeballed it if you need to measure it then you know measure it but I'm just kind of eyeballing it to make sure that it's straight and then I'm going to just make some lines so it kind of looks like wood or shiplap or you know just that look whatever you want to call it I'm using my little metal ruler I get that at Dollar Tree I love that metal ruler. It comes in so handy and unlike the wooden ruler, I can use it with an X-Acto knife too. So this is Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle. This is a great brown to use. Now I'm going to dip my little fine tip paintbrush in this and sometimes I wipe it on the table to get so there's not big clumps of paint on the end so it kind of makes more of a pointy tip. And then I'm going to use my ruler to give me a straight edge so that I'm not going wonky all over everywhere. And if it's a, I mean, you don't want really a perfectly straight line because we want that to look like the crack in the wood. I'm going to wipe that ruler off so there's not paint on it because I don't want to get paint all over everywhere. So I'm just going to make all of these lines so that it looks like we have some little shiplap. One of my favorite DIY girls that I've saw I have seen do this many, many, many times is Caitlin over at oh I forgot her her channel. Sorry Caitlin Crafts Caitlin Cat 
crafts. I don't know. I'll link her in the description box. And she does a lot of really pretty stuff and, and makes it look really easy. But I did learn this technique from her. Or I watched, I've watched her do this technique a lot. And so she inspired me to start doing this technique. So that that's chalk paint. So it's going to dry super fast. So I'm going to do very, very light sanding. I mean, I'm just barely touching those lines just to kind of make it look a little more distressed so it's not they're not so strong then i'm going to take my little chippy brush i got this at michael's you can get chippy brushes at um, dollar tree you can just use an old brush that's kind of worn out i'm going to wipe most of the paint off and do like a dry brushing technique right around the edges and then i do a little bit in between there just to kind of make it look old I want to just make it look old and worn out, like a little bit like wood, I suppose. So you can see me doing the edges. And you notice that I'm not really putting my paint back in that brush. Sometimes I'll try to, if it's not dry, use the paint that was still on the table, which is a poster board on my table, by the way, to protect my table and, and just craft freely. Now our little layered heart, we're going to glue down there in the middle of that oh my goodness i think this is looking so cute this is one of my favorites i'm gonna make a twine bow and just wrap it around my fingers leave a tail at the bottom wrap it around my fingers however many times you wrap it is how thick your bow is going to be obviously then i take it off or sometimes i just take my fingers out of the middle and hold it tight but take it off wrap another piece of twine around the middle tie it off Tight, good and tight and I like to leave those strings so you have four little tails I just if, especially if it's a thick bow if it's a thinner bow I don't but if it's a thick bow I like to leave more tails but you you do whatever you like to do a little spot of hot glue stick it on there and we are done it can sit up you can put a hanger on the back if you want I absolutely love this. Oh, I'm going to show you. So I have these little hangers I get on Amazon. You can hammer those into wood or you can take a piece of twine. I always tie a knot in the bottom of mine. I forgot that I put a hanger on the back of this one. Sorry about that. And glue it down. And I always use a little piece of scrap fabric or scrap ribbon or something like that on the bottom just to give it a little extra added support. So you're going to see me put a big wad of hot glue on there. And then there's my little piece of, I think that might be just a little piece of scrap flannel that I had. Or it might be, I don't know what that is, muslin, I don't know, something. I, sometimes I use a little piece of scrap ribbon if I have a piece of scrap ribbon, ribbon laying on my desk. So there it is. What do you think? I absolutely love that one. Number three. This one was a little bit boho inspired, I think. I'm going to paint this with mineral, and you're going to see later I paint the edges a different color. But you could paint it any color just so that those skewers... You know, just in case in between you see the color. So it doesn't really matter what color as long as it's a neutral color. I get those skewers in that big package at Dollar Tree. You can get them at Walmart. There's a lot of different places you can get them. They're very inexpensive. And you get a lot of them in there and you can use them for a lot of projects. This was the most time consuming uh, heart that I did out of the five. And I'm not going to lie, it took me a while to do this. But I think the result is amazing. Very different from most crafts that I do. So I'm measuring. I started in the middle. I'm measuring. So I can. you can use some heavy-duty scissors, or I tend to use my needle nose pliers, have that wire cutter part. I use wire cutters a lot to cut these. At some point, I'm going to use a little hot glue. At some point, I switched over and got my little mini miter saw out to cut those. And it cuts at an angle, but only an angle one direction. And 
So I did end up using using my miter saw and the pliers and the scissors. I just kind of used everything to make it work how I wanted to. So I'm trying to get these at the correct angle. I'm marking the angle on the skewers, how I need to cut it. And I did use, see how I'm angling that to cut those at an angle so they fit around the heart. And I'm using hot glue, and I did switch over to some tacky glue, Aileen's. I think I'm saying that right, Aileen's or Aileen's. Aileen's maybe tacky glue, because the hot glue, it dried kind of fast, and it was kind of a mess. It would kind of squeeze up in between the skewers, and it kind of made a mess. So I decided and switched over to that tacky glue, because it worked better. And then I decided to get out my little mini miter saw because it chopped them so much faster and it's so much handier. So I just continued to cut them at the angle that they needed to be cut and glued them down. And this is how it looks. I took this sandpaper and gently sanded the edges so as not to lift up any of those little sticks just to get the roughness off. So here I just made a little bow. I had made a bit messy bow and I'm not the, the best at making those messy bows. I just don't really like how they turn out. So I just made a twine bow. Love it. Really, really love how this turned out. Another really simple one. We're just going to give this a good coat of white linen chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. I think I gave this two coats of paint, actually. So, got that red covered good. The chalk paint covers good, so we will... Just give it two good coats so it looks nice and finished. But if you do thinner coats of paint, they dry faster too. So I'd rather do two thin coats and have them dry fast than try to do one thick coat and wait and wait and wait on it to dry. I tell my kids in Sunday school that all the time and they do an amazing job and they're 10 and 11 year olds. So I'm going to take this paint by Folk Art chalk paint and it's black. I think it's called Rich Black. I'm going to take my little chippy brush that I've been using, and I'm just going to go around the edges. I'm not really sure what you want to call this look. It's not really distressed. I guess anytime we use a kind of a dry brush, we call it distressed, but this isn't really distressed. It's just kind of a smoky look or a an outlined kind of look. I don't know. It just gives it some dimension, some texture. I love dimension. I love texture. Um... You know, if you like a flat, clean look, then that's fine too. You could totally leave it plain white if that's what you want to do. But I just think this makes it pop when it's almost like an outline right there on the outsides. Uh, do it pretty heavy on that. And then I decided I got it a little too heavy in the middle from what I wanted. So I took my sandpaper and lightly sanded it. Another option would be to dry brush white back over it. I didn't want to have to clean that little brush. That's my favorite little chippy brush. I didn't want to have to dirty up another brush because I love cleaning paint brushes. Said no crafter ever. So, yeah, I don't like to wash paint brushes. So, cleaning all that sand up with my little ladybug vacuum cleaner. Put the lids back on. Oops. Decided I'm going to do something else with that paint while I have it out. So I've got these little crosses at Dollar Tree. They came in a package with quite a few in there. And they're really cute because they're brown and you don't even have to paint them. But I wanted to paint this particular one in black to go with our project today. So use my little tweezers, my little handy dandy tweezers I use all the time. Move it around so I'm not getting fingerprints all over it. Now I'm just drawing on my table. Yep, drawing on my poster board, tracing my heart because I want to give some options besides using the cutting machine all the time. And if you don't have good handwriting, you can print it out on, I should, I should have shown this technique, but you can 
print it out on your printer. You can use some carbon paper and go over it, and then you can use your Sharpie with it. I'm okay with my handwriting. I just wrote, Them Sings My Soul, because I love that song, How Great Thou Art. You could put any words that you want to on there. I also want to thought about writing great is thy faithfulness I mean there's a lot of different be still and know there's a lot of other really good sayings or just put your own favorite saying on there but that's just what I when I decided to do the musical theme on this one I just that's just the song that came to my head got in my spirit so there it is and I'm doing that with the sharpie on that paper like that because the paint gets on the marker and it tends to make it feel dried out but if you kind of swirl it around on a piece of paper it'll kind of almost re-ink it so now i am going to attempt this messy bow once again i think if i keep trying it enough times possibly i may actually make one that looks decent it's just not what i i'm going to say grew up with been crafting since i was about 12 years old yeah and i'm old so that's a long time and I just kind of got stuck in the ways of making bows that I did. And I've seen these girls make these awesome messy bows with just these strips of fabric. And they're so cute. But mine don't look so cute. Maybe if you know how to make them and you're watching me, give me some pointers and some tips. But I think I do it just like the other girls do. But, you know, maybe it's the ribbon I'm using. I don't use enough ribbon. Maybe my ribbon's too thin. I don't know, but this one turned out okay. It turned out, obviously I used it, so it turned out, um, you know, like I wanted it. And this ribbon is more like cord. It's like a cord, and the ends fray really bad. And so I thought that would be kind of a cute look. And I got this musical ribbon off Amazon because um, I have eight grandchildren, and my two older boys don't come to Camp Gigi anymore but the girls and little Jack come to Camp Gigi every year I have them for five days and it is fun filled fun packed and we have a theme and this year was or last summer was strike up the band and so we had a lot of musical themed uh, decor and what have you with it and so I had bought this ribbon thinking I was going to do something with it and I didn't really do anything with it so I had it left over, and when I decided I wanted to do a music a heart with a music theme, then I was like, aha, I have that in my stag. See, it pays to be a craft hoarder. I promise it does. Oh, but it, you have to have some space. My garage is full. My craft room is full. I can barely walk around in my craft room. Anyway, there we go. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. And his grace is sufficient. So here we go. This is our final heart. That same chunky heart from Dollar Tree. Peeled the front off. Using the back. Got this pretty pink from Michaels. I believe it's called, I don't know if it's rose or pink. I mean, it's just a simple one. I just go and I just pick out colors I think I, I will like and use. And I just buy them. So give this a good coat of pink. I use my little chippy brush. I'm going to dry brush this white on here a little bit. I'm not going to do it too heavy, but just like I said on the last one, I, I, just, I like to have a little dimension. And I'm going to glue those half beads around the edges. So I want to be able to do this before I've glued the beads on. I'm still trying to decide if I like to glue the beads on before I paint my base coat or after. I really think I like doing it the way I did this one where I paint my base coat and then put the half beads on and then paint the beads. I think it's a little easier and it goes a little quicker. Here's my little bag hack. Put your paint brushes in a little plastic baggie or wrap it in some press and seal or whatever you have to preserve it until you're going to use it again and it'll stay moist. Here I go with this tacky glue. Now, I keep it stored upside down because, see, I'm having to shake it, shake it, shake it. I, I store them upside down so the glue stays 
at the tip. So I'm just glue these little half beads that I get at Amazon on Amazon. I I glue them all the way around and see I like this tacky glue because it doesn't dry quite as fast as the hot glue and I can move them around if I if I make a boo-boo, which I do. I have to move them around to get them straight and get them even, but it does dry pretty fast, like maybe 10 minutes and and they're dry, dry enough to paint anyway. So I just glue those all the way around the edge. I just think this makes it I don't know. I love this. I don't know what it makes it. It makes it beautiful. So now I'm going to paint those beads. So I think that's easier to do it with with the um, background already painted. I'm trying to keep that pink off my white that I already distressed. Or that one did distress it, but whitewashed. I'm using my heat gun, my heat gun to dry it. You can use a blow dryer because I was a little impatient and wanted to get on with this project. It was the last one. Do my little dry brushing on the beads. I love this look on the beads. I love it doing it with a lot of different colors too. I've made a lot of projects or I've done a lot of different colors like with beige and brown, different grays, and just doing the beads on top a lighter or a darker color. I've done it on some candle holders. It, it's just a really fun technique in it you get a beautiful result in the end so I do it until just as much as you just do as much as you want as little as you want you don't have to do it at all but I love it I love it love it that's that's my style it's looking good now I used my Cricut or no I did not use my Cricut I used my Starcraft solo machine my new machine because it cuts out the tiniest little letters um, and it's so easy to weed out I'm showing you here how to weed these tiny little letters are hard to weed and so my solo starcraft by starcraft makes it easier i originally cut this with my cricut and it messed it all up it did not cut it good i, I like to use the cricut a lot because it's a lot it's kind of plug and play it's just quick and easy Anybody can use a Cricut. I've had three, maybe four of them because my husband is awesome and every year for Christmas he knows that if he gets me the new upgraded one that I'm going to love it and he wants to get me something that I love and so he's amazing. But the Solo Starcraft is a little bit more um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's a little more complicated to use. There's definitely a learning curve, but the software that comes with it is amazing. Okay, here's my Frisco craft transfer tape. I love this stuff. So Wendy over at White Sparrow Living turned me on to this. Thank you, Wendy, because I absolutely love it. It. I want you to see how easy that peels off. Turn it over and wow, it comes off so easy. I use this a lot with my Sunday school kids too. We do a lot of crafts with vinyl. I'm teaching them how to do the decals and they love that they're not having to, having to scrape, scrape, scrape and peel and scrape and peel and scrape. I'm just putting some little slits in there so it's easier for me to scrape it down. I did not get it centered in there perfectly, but I'm okay with that. It's a handmade craft. Even machine made crafts, even, craft, even home decor that you get in the big stores they're not perfect things are not centered that drives me crazy if i'm paying big bucks but anyway this it was a little bit it was hard to come off off on that paint so i had to scrape it a little bit and i was just using that little wooden heart here i'm telling you i didn't get it centered good so i'm having to push that little s down in there close to that bead but i still think it turned out good i love it i absolutely love this one that one is my favorite. Our first DIY, we're starting out with one of these heart palette signs from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take it apart. And I'm going to heat this up with my little heat gun and pop these off. I'm being very careful because it did rip off some of the wood off of one of these little slats. 
and I had to glue it back down. I didn't show that on camera, but I did have to glue it back down. So I'm being kind of careful with this, but you can see that it, these things come off pretty easily. Okay, now I've removed them all. Yes, I painted all this with some white chalk paint and I'm gonna cover all of it up with something else, but I just gave it all a base coat with white. Now I'm putting Mod Podge all over this piece, being sure to get it all the way out to the edges on this piece and the bottom piece, this little triangle piece. And then I'm gonna put it to the side and let it dry completely because we're gonna use the iron-on method after a while. Now I have this piece of white fabric that was the curtain to my room in the salon and I changed it out so I brought it home to use it as scrap fabric. And I absolutely adore this fabric so I'm gonna use it up. So I just cut it to fit this little slat and I'm going to use some Aline's tacky glue and I'm gonna put a big glob of it on there and it's super thick so I wet my paintbrush got some water on there and just thinned it out a little bit and got a good heavy coat of that glue on there and I'm gonna find the right side of my fabric and get this turned around and put it on there I'm gonna get my little squeegee with my little missing uh, fingernail on there and then I'm gonna I'm going to use the squeegee to spread the glue out underneath there and then just make sure all my edges have Mod Podge under them and not Mod Podge I didn't use Mod Podge silly girl it's glue okay then just trim up the edges okay now I'm finding some paint that matches this beautiful scrapbook paper that I'm going to use and this paint is craft smart that comes from michaels and it is the color rose it's a beautiful pink and it matches that scrapbook paper that i got from michaels um and i just absolutely love that scrapbook paper so now i got most of that pink out of my brush on the napkin and then i just put some diddle of white dry brushing on there now on the top piece and the bottom piece where we put that mod podge I'm gonna put some of this beautiful scrapbook paper. So I'm placing it over the part of the paper that I want on there, and I'm just gonna do a little rough cut. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. But this is my favorite method to Mod Podge because this heat reactivates that Mod Podge under there, and it gives you the most beautiful finish with no wrinkles or bubbles. Then I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna clean those edges up all nice and smooth. Sometimes I use some sandpaper to make the edges nice and smooth, but today I'm just using my X-Acto knife. I'm gonna bring those pieces back in and see how they look. Now I went out to the shop and I got my scrap wood and I cut the pieces all the size I wanted and I'm using the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree and I'm just gluing these planks together. Okay, once I get all these planks glued together, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to use some large craft sticks and I'm going to put them on the back for just a little extra added security and I'm going to staple them down to the back, glue them and staple them so that this will give it a little bit more stability and these planks will stay sturdy. I painted it all with aged gray by rust -Oleum. It's a chalk paint. And then I'm going to take this Elephant by Waverly and I'm going to give it some dry brush in there to give it a little dimension. Or like my friend Indy Annie Jones says, depth. <laughs> and then I, that's, I did that same thing with the paintbrush. Just got all the gray out, the dark out as much as I could and then just dipped it in the white because I don't like to wash paintbrushes. I have this saying that says, I love to wash paintbrushes said no crafter ever okay so i'm going to lay these pieces on here and get them all laid out like i want them i just love this look i have a piece in my bathroom that i did that matches my bathroom that i did this with i'm just going to put some hot glue and some more of that awesome wood glue good hold fast hold and i'm just going to do that with all of these pieces i don't think i'm going to show you all of them but you get the gist of it we're going to glue these down. And then with that same white fabric, I'm going to make just a simple bow. I think I might have done two loops on it. I'm going to glue it 
up there. I'm sorry I'm out of frame, but this was a big piece and it just didn't fit. I should have raised my camera up a little bit. And then I'm just going to put a couple little pieces of greenery in that bow. And then I'm going to cut up the little tails and I'm going to tie this little key. This is the key. And just tie it up there. I think this is cute. I get these keys off of Amazon. I'll link them in the description box below in case you're interested in getting some. And I think this just turned out adorable. Let me know what you think. Okay, our next DIY comes, this piece was complimentary from my sister. She gave me a big bag of things from the dollar, Target dollar spot. I don't know why she bought these things and didn't use them, but there was a big bag full of items. And if she's watching, maybe she can comment and say why she didn't use all that stuff she bought. Just like us, we buy stuff and don't use it. But anyway, I'm very grateful that she gave it to me. So you can see I have another beautiful piece of scrapbook paper. And I'm just cutting it down to fit into that spot up there that says laundry. Now, this little thing was just as cute as it could be like it was. But I just wanted to, you know, do what we do, take it up a notch. So I'm going to use the little squeegee tool and spread that glue around. And then I'm also going to put three hearts on it. And I'm going to use the glue stick. You could use Mod Podge if you want, but the glue is going to hold it just fine. And I'm going to use that... Um, exacto knife to cut that paper trim it up I think I might have used the sand sandpaper a little bit on that one and I'm going to use a sponge I learned this from bargain Bethany about three or four years ago probably five years ago and to paint with that makeup sponge I'm going to use the DIY white wax and put that white wax on to just give that a softer look and I love how that looks so I did that, then I'm taking a piece of twine, and I'm going to tie a knot in each end, and I'm going to measure from one side of this to the other, and I'm going to glue that on to make a little clothesline. This is simple, 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 simple little DIY. So I'm going to use a little hot glue, and I'm just going to simply glue that on there. This is a little wood frame on there, so that twine's going to hold on to that with some hot glue just fine. And then I'm just going to take those little clothespins that I have, those little mini clothespins, and I'm going to put those hearts right on there. Now, I thought about putting this little Be Mine from Dollar Tree on there, and now that I'm watching myself do that, I'm thinking I should have put it up there on that floral paper, but I didn't. I still can, but let me know if you would have put that on there or if you would have put something else on there. Our next DIY is a Dollar Tree sign, and I took those little foam flowers off. They were cute, but we're going to make it cuter. And so some of that stuck pretty hard. I had to work at it. Okay, so this is a one of those little wooden hearts that uh, comes from Dollar Tree. They come several in a package. I don't know if they had them this year. I didn't get any Valentine's stuff from Dollar Tree this year. I'm crafting my stash. And so I just put some wood filler in that little heart. Now some more scrapbook paper. I'm trying to decide if, which way I want that wood grain to go. And I'm just going to draw some lines with my pencil and cut it with my scissors. Make it fit on that sign. And I'm just going to use Elmer's glue stick. And get it on there really good. And put the scrapbook paper on there. And I use my squeegee to make sure that all of the paper is adhered all over make it nice and smooth this little um, wooden house came from Dollar Tree but they didn't have them at my Dollar Tree so I ordered them online of course I had to buy 24 of them so you're gonna probably be seeing them a lot in DIYs to come now I'm trying to decide which paper that I want to put on this house I love all of these papers um, and I but I decided in the end to go with this pink one I'm gonna use the Mod Podge Iron On Method again. So I'm going to put that on there, let it dry, and then I mixed up this paint um, just to a color that I wanted that I thought matched with that 
scrapbook paper and I'm just going to paint the edges of that house and then I'm going to sand that off and I've had something yucky on my sandpaper and it kind of made my heart a little bit yucky but I painted over it with that same paint that I painted the side of the house with and just gave it one good coat and I'm checking to make sure it matches that paper I'm testing that out to make sure that that's dry and it was so now we're just going to iron that on it's very quick I just if you've never tried this method go for it trimming it up with my exacto knife dusting it off and we're just going to glue it on there maybe I'm placing it I don't know what I'm doing right now who knows placing it to see if it's going to fit good then I decided that this frame was just not the right, the right color it was too kind of yellowish goldish something with that wood grain of that paper so I get truffle I get this dark chocolate brown from Anita's then I get my ink by Waverly out and I start mixing the dark brown and the black and this frame has um, it's kind of a like a vinyl plastic coating on it you know like it's um, contact paper or something over it so it didn't really the paint would didn't really adhere good so I just sort of wiped it off I'm practicing on the back so I decide I, I get a technique that I like so I mix this brown and the black together and I just kind of and it does have grooves in it a little bit it's really weird tell me if you've had any of these frames and you know what I'm talking about so I just kind of wiped it on wiped it off just to give it a little bit different color a little tone just change the tone of it a little so now I'm just going to glue all my pieces down with some hot glue put that heart on there put the house and then this little metal love piece that they have at Dollar Tree every, usually every year like I said I haven't been this year they come three in a package and then I'm just going to put everything back in the frame make sure I have the hanger at the top I'm kind of bad about remembering to do that and it turns out really cute but that little heart needed something so I decided to put a little twine bow right there and you can hang this or it could be or you could set it and have it be just a little leaner on a table okay for our last one and probably my favorite one in this video I'm just gonna mix up some oh what is this antique wax by Waverly with some water to make a stain you've probably seen everybody do this because it's a very popular technique now this is just some scrap wood some more of that scrap wood from my beautiful client who gave me all that scrap wood and I'm just you see what I'm doing I'm just painting it on there and wiping it off you have to be careful not to get too much because it can make the wood wet so just put it on there and wipe it off you can see on the left I'm going to put some hearts and some keys on it and as soon as I get it all painted front back sides top bottom and then I'm going to take these three hearts and I have this kind of pink mauve color that I've mixed up a long time ago and I kept mixing trying to get the right color so I had a lot of it left over let me know if you've ever done that and then I have some white over here and I'm just going to keep adding white until I get in the color till I get the right color I'm going to do a kind of an ombre effect so we're going to have the three hearts they're just going to get lighter as we go just keep adding white so we'll have three different colors a dark a medium and a light and then when they get all dry I lay them on top of the stained piece of wood to see how they look and lay them out and I decide that they need a little definition they just look kind of bland so I took some white chalk paint and dry brushed around the edges to give it some definition almost kind of like outlining them I usually start out with a little and then just keep adding until I get the right amount that I want. I really love the color of this heart. I really love this color pink.
Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I'm gonna use a little wood glue, a little hot glue, glue these on. There, my wood glue went rolling off the table. <laughs> okay, and I guess in between this video, I got my nails done because that nail's back on there. Woohoo! And don't worry about those holes because we're gonna put those little keys. Those little keys were a separate package. I'll try to remember to link both of those in the description box. Now I'm using some DIY clear wax because I want to seal this up and it just gives it a finished look and it just makes it look high-end. And I'm gonna do it on the hearts and the wood piece all over. And just seals it, just makes your project look really nice. I'll, I'll leave a link to Upcycle by Brie. That's where I get my DIY wax and paints. Her, li her link will be in the description box. So I'm going to use this E6000. I'm going to squeeze some out and just use a toothpick to apply it. I did try to use a drop of hot glue on there, but there just wasn't enough um, you know, area to put some hot glue. And I knew I could just lay these on there and walk away and that they would dry. See, they're just wasn't enough area and I know the hot glue doesn't really stick hold metal that great so that one was out of out of frame but the rest of them will be I just love these little keys I think they're so precious kind of vintagey this one didn't have much area to glue down but it stuck just fine and finally, this last little one. And I didn't even put any twine on this, this piece, but it turned out beautiful. I absolutely love it. So let me know in this video which one is your favorite. Be sure to like this video and comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Because all of those things help my channel. I want to thank you for watching this video. And... I want you to remember to be still and know that He is God. I'm so glad you're still watching because some of these videos were when I very first started my channel and some of them are a little hard to watch. The sound quality is terrible, the angles are terrible, but the DIYs are still great. So let's get back to the video. I picked up these two little boxes at Dollar Tree and I thought I was going to be able just to pull this little bumblebee off and save it, but I was wrong. I ended up bringing home my baby bumblebee and smashing it all up. So it ended up in the trash, but I kept this one intact to show you what it looks like to craft with. Um, that little bumblebee did not come off easy. And these words and that outline are kind of etched into the wood. And I'm going to try to paint over it and see if the paint will kind of fill in that, that etched part. But we'll see. So we're, this is Rust-Oleum chalk paint in aged gray. And we'll give it a good coat and see if it's going to cover up that um, etched but it didn't. Okay, now these little half beads I get on Amazon in a big huge bag. They're very affordable. Uh, they go a long way and I'm just gonna glue them all along the edge of this. I did kind of space them out before I started this video to kind of make sure that I could get the right amount, an even amount on each side. So I'm going to paint down inside the box of this a little bit. You really won't see down in there, but I just like to do that for whatever reason. I also like to paint the back or finish off the back side of my products. So you'll see how we do that a little bit later on. So that's all painted and dried. By the magic of editing and we are going to work on these beautiful little hearts that I got from Dollar Tree.
I also like to whitewash whitewash things so we'll do that um, later on right now I'm deciding which piece of scrapbook paper that I want to use do I want the pink or do I want the gray and I decided on the gray I just felt like it looked better but you use whatever kind of paper you want if you decide to do this also going to cover the back like I said I like to finish out the backs so I'm just going to lay it down on there get my hair in the frame and trace it out and then we'll cover the back too do this little whitewash technique that I like with a dry brush on these hearts so I'll use these little chippy brushes um, I got these at Michaels but you can get them at Dollar Tree too so I put a little bit of paint on the brush and then wipe most of it off and then just highlight the the hearts so I like this I, I like this kind of shabby chic country shabby chic modern shabby chic look and if you get some little bubbles or buckling on the paper no worries um, you know that twine those little twine bows are really cute and I was going back and forth but I decided that the raffia matched those skewers and then I don't have to paint the skewers you could paint the skewers if you wanted to if you were going to use some ribbon if you wanted to use white ribbon and paint the skewers white I think that would look really good So then I bought these stickers a long time ago at Hobby Lobby and they probably still have them because they still have a lot of stickers but I bought you know I always get them when they're half price so I bought them a long time ago and I'm trying to decide which one of these sets I want to do them all lined up and centered where I want them to be before I commit to laying them across there the on the scrapbook paper and then just put them down where they belong and I'm using those polka dots on the scrapbook paper you can see me running my finger across there I'm using that as my, the polka dots as my guide now I'm just going to poke those little hearts down in there I'm gonna take some scrap pieces of greenery that I had in my stash and I'm just going to arrange it around there. I'm not the best at arranging greenery, so I spared you all of the back and forth I did trying to make it all look good, and I'm just gonna show you the final result. And here is our final result. found these three boards actually I had more but I picked these three because they were all the same length I had left over from a project so I'm using this white chalk paint and I'm just going to paint all three of these boards the, with this white chalk paint and give it a good coat the top and the sides and you'll see later what I do with the back why I do things in the order that I do I don't know but you know it works in the end you use the technique that works good for you when you craft and 
you know, like I always get paint all over my fingers. I watch other DIYers when they paint and they don't get paint all over their fingers. I get it all over me, but hey, it doesn't matter. It washes off. So you see here, I have them all painted. It's dry. Now I'm going to use this wood glue that I get at Dollar Tree. It works really good. I'm just going to squirt some in between. I'm going to use this craft stick to kind of smooth it. And I got a little too much, so I'm just going to put it on another one so we don't waste it. I'll put some on there. Um, you'll see that I kind of slide it around once I stick them together. That is so that they don't stick to the paper. Now I am going to just make sure all the glue is wiped off and there's not any excess anywhere. And then I'm going to put the clamp on. Nope. And first I'm going to put these craft sticks on the back to give it a little extra support. And then I decide that I want to use a little hot glue for a quick stick. The hot glue will make it stick quick. And now we'll use the clamp to hold it all together. Then we'll let that dry. Okay, you can see here I finished paint, painting the back. I put some staples in to give it a little extra support so it's not going anywhere. And I'm going to take this wax by Folk Art and I'm going to give it, it's a little heavier than a dry brush. I'm going to get down in those cracks and crevices and then take a paper towel and kind of wipe off a little bit, kind of blend it in. Not really a whole lot's coming off on that napkin because I'm not really using a whole lot. I really just want to give it a good old look, a worn look, a distressed look. And there's some little grooves in the wood from maybe poor sanding or maybe I didn't sand it. Maybe I sanded it too much. And it just, um, I'm really liking how this is looking. This wax has a little bit of a gold tone to it. And so now I'm going to take the Truffle by Waverly. And it is has a little bit more of a matte finish to it. And so I like the way that that is going to add a different texture to it. And then I'm going to just grab my sandpaper and give it a little sanding here in just a minute. And just to kind of blend all those colors together and make it a little softer. And just around the edges and... Just, you know, in some places where I got it too heavy, I can go over it a little bit and that helps. Then I'm going to wipe off all that grit and, you know, don't like crumbs. So I'll get my little handy dandy ladybug vacuum cleaner out and suck up all those crumbs. Love this thing. It's got a little switch on the side. I'll leave the Amazon link in the description box below. Next, I'm going to make the little uh, metal pieces that were on the edge using this aluminum disposable cookie sheet from Dollar Tree. I just cut the edges off and then cut some little strips. You can use your paper cutter if you want to make them like super straight. Um, the edges of it can be kind of sharp, so please be careful. I just use this um, little tool that I have that came with some paper crafting kit and or this a Sharpie marker. There are those little dots that don't completely smooth out, but that's fine. It gives it some character. Um, I'm pressing pretty hard and just putting it down flat. Anything that you can press it out flat with. And be sure to do both sides, pressing it down good. And it tries to curl up on you, but just keep pressing it out, getting it good and nice and smooth. And then just press it around. It's nice because it kind of holds its shape as you try to press it around there. I'm not sure why I flipped that around, but I did. Um, and then just hot glue it. I'm going to grab my silicone finger protector because guess what? That metal is going to get hot.
Okay, now we're going to work on the little brads or little nail heads that are going to go on our metal end pieces. I picked up these um, pearl strand sticky beads years ago and I had them in my stash. So I thought I'd grab them. They're not even sticky anymore. That's how long I've had them. So I'm going to use this truffle by Waverly and just dab it all over them. So I got this little tool at Dollar Tree and I'm using it on this stencil that I cut on my StarCraft solo machine. And I'm using my Frisco transfer tape and I'm trying to get this centered in here just as good as I can. And you know, it, I usually can eyeball pretty good. But as you can see, I didn't put the eye on I Love Us. I think it just got cut off on the stencil. But I don't realize it yet, so I continue on. So I'm putting a coat of Mod Podge on to seal the edges of this stencil so when I paint it, the paint doesn't seep under the stencil and bleed. It works wonderful. The Mod Podge dries really quickly, so it's a great thing to do. Now, I'm not real sure when I realize that I don't have the eye on there, but I just continue on creating this. So now I'm going to go back to these little beads and I take this gold metallic paint from Folk Art and a Q-tip and just dab, dab, dab until I get it the color that I want it. Now, the Mod Podge is all dry, so I'm going to take the Folk Art Rich Black Paint that I love so much, and I'm going to pour a little bit of it into one of these Favor Cups because I don't want this big jar of paint to dry out. It's already pretty thick, but I'm going to use one of these sponge dabbers to dab, 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 and... I get the coverage that I want. A lot of times I will tape off parts of the stencil that I'm going to do a different color like I would put a little painter's tape or masking tape over that little heart because I'm going to do it red but I thought I could be really careful and not do that with this and it worked out fine. Um, I just dabbed my black on there and I was really careful when I got over to the S. So crimson chalk paint. I'm going to use a makeup sponge. I'm not sure why I'm dabbing my hand with it, but I'm sure I had a reason when I did it. So just a little bit of paint. I'm even just going to use it out of the lid and dab it on there. And painting part will be pretty close to done. I'm going to do a little bit of touch-ups and we'll be done with the painting part and we'll peel and reveal. then just finishing up the little touch-ups. Um, like I said, I used a little fine tip brush to just kind of fill in these little gaps in between there. You don't even have to do that, but you know, I'm a little extra, so I like to 
just do a little extra in there. I just thought it looked better. It, it still looks like planks and rust, you know, a little rustic, but I, I really like to fill that in a little bit. And I think that right about when I finish this is when I realize that I don't have the eye on there because I kind of clap my hands a little bit. I don't know if at that point I think it looks really good or what, but here I am outside using my sander, taking it back down to start over. Now I'm not going to show you how I did this from beginning because I already showed you on the one that I boo-booed on. So I am just going to finish gluing down these little edge pieces that I put back on. These little metal end pieces. I don't even know what to call those. But I'm calling them metal end pieces. <laughs> how about that? So I glue those back down. Get those down with lots of hot glue. And now it looks good. So now we will work on getting those um, little metal end pieces scruffed up a little bit. So those pieces that I cut a little bit shorter earlier, I'm going to use as a little um, tester to try out this technique with this old piece of sand block that I have from Dollar Tree just to kind of take the dull shine off that aluminum and, you know, give it more of that dull aged look. It doesn't really age it, but it just takes that shine off. And I was afraid it was going to leave scratches, scratch marks from the sandpaper in the aluminum, but it did not. It worked out really good. Let's get these little brads, rivets, whatever you want to call them. And I put these little pearls that we painted earlier on here, and they just look small. I think I'm going to double them over and put two on top and two on bottom, which really would look cute, but not like the, the one I saw at Ross. So I had those stickers I just showed you that I had gotten at Dollar Tree, and I used the same technique to paint them as I did the little pearls. So we're using them. So I was going to glue them down, but they're already sticky on the back. How convenient and so just there's a little paint around the edges just gonna peel that I peeled it off and I think these look awesome I'm so pleased with this I think it turned out great okay for this one I picked up some of these little houses at Dollar General and I think that said a dollar fifty and really cute they stand up by themselves you can put a picture in them we're gonna use this aluminum cookie sheet again or baking sheet um, just so happened the corner fit right up in there but you can just cut it to fit I put it in there press it down so it's really easy to tell where to cut this stuff cuts so easy and smooth and supposedly, if you cut foil with your scissors, it helps keep them sharp and clean. I don't know. So yeah, it fits in there nicely. And I'm going to leave the texture on it. I'm, you know, not going to smooth it out. Not going to put any kind of little grooves or anything in it. I'm just going to put a few little dots of hot glue on there. And the hot glue holds this little aluminum really good so it doesn't take a whole lot just a little on each corner and put this down on there and you know it's hot hot transfers through there so I'm using my little silicone finger protector from Dollar Tree now I'm gonna just trim off those edges with an exacto knife and make it nice and smooth but be careful because there's sh those edges are sharp it is metal even though it's a thin flimsy metal it is still metal and now I'm going to show you how you can actually make it uh, you know have a different look where you I forget what that's called all of a sudden oh my that's what happens when you craft late at night 
Okay, so now I have this little square charm, wooden charm that I got in a uh, an assortment of charms from somewhere. I don't remember where. Michael's, I think. And I'm going to stain it and the rooftop, the edges of this little house, and so they're all cohesive in color. Now, let's put a decal on this little tag. It says, I love us, the theme of our video. So I cut this out on my StarCraft Solo cutting machine. I'm using my Frisco transfer tape, which is amazing. I'm going to link it in the description box below for you. And it that the the transfer tape just peels the stuff up so easy. That peels that vinyl up so easy, makes it really easy to transfer whatever you're trying to transfer it onto. Never have a problem with it. Okay, now we're going to look for some placement. I'm going to place it right there. I'm picking a twine bow, trying to figure out where I want to put it. Do I want to put some greenery in there? I have these little sprigs of greenery off of some picks from Dollar Tree, some things I had bought on Amazon, just leftovers from decorations. I really wanted to put it on top of this little... Um, tag, charm, whatever you want to call it, and put a little twine bow on there. But like I've mentioned before, I am not the best when it comes to floral arranging. So, yeah, I decided that didn't look right. I didn't like how that looked. So I do like the twine on there. I, I think the twine bow was a little bit much for that. Um, but, yeah, I'm trying to decide. Where do I want it? What do I want to do with that? So I'm just going to do this little twine bow on there. And then I'm just going to kind of play around with some stuff until I decide what I want, where I want it. And I'll glue it down and I'll have the finished product. And here we go. Last but not least, this adorable little house. This was a little hanging sign I got from Dollar Tree at Christmas time. It had a lot of glitter. Didn't want to sand it. Had a little wreath on it. Right there you can see where the wreath was. I just took some brown packing paper, cut it out, traced it off, cut it out, glued it to the back so it looks finished. And I painted this um, a solid color. You can do it whatever color you want and I'll end up gluing those little rooftop pieces back on in the end. Now let's create some wood, some shiplap, whatever you want to call it. Now I just kind of eyeball it most of the time but I'm going to measure them about an inch and a half each and I still am just going to measure one side then I'm just going to kind of eyeball it across to make sure that I have like about the same amount of space on each end and make sure my ruler's pretty even and it, it looks pretty good. So I can usually eyeball fairly good. Sometimes it gets wonky but most of the time it's pretty good. So then we're going to make our little chimney. I'm going to take a makeup sponge and cut it down and I'm going to do it with this, um, what color is that, elephant Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to just do a little stone effect. So, getting rid of all the crumbs. Don't like crumbs. So, I'm just doing it like you're brick, laying bricks. And I, I really kind of want it to look more like stone than bricks. So, that's why I'm doing the gray. Okay, and they don't have to be all even or anything. Because if you've ever seen a stone fireplace, they're not even. Now, these lines, I'm going to use a really fine tip paintbrush and my ruler. And just make some not so neat lines and they don't have to be solid all the way across just we just want it to look like um, you know the first project we did those lines in the wood okay here we go back with our 
um, chimney. That's what that thing is called. So I have a little bit lighter gray. This is aged gray by Rust-Oleum. And we're going to just give it some little highlights, give it some dimension, make it look like stone. And there we go. I think I like the way that looks. So now I'm just going to dry brush some of this aged gray across here very lightly just to give it some highlights right kind of in the middle of those wood planks. Now we have some Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle. I'm going to use a, a chippy brush. I'm going to do some dry brushing. This is an old, old, old chippy brush. It's really stiff, but I love to do it with when I'm trying to do some dry brushing. And it's very small and narrow, so I can get in like those little crevices. I can kind of make lines to make it look like wood grain. And I like to make the wood grain look like it's coming from the outside of the of the wood planks. I mean, obviously, you're not going to make it look like real wood, but I think this is a very nice effect. Now I'm just taking a a dry cloth, soft old t-shirt cut up and just uh, smooth it off. Now I'm going to take my truffle Waverly chalk paint and just kind of brush it on here. It doesn't have to be really perfect because they're already brown, but I just felt like they needed a fresh coat of paint. So I'm going to get the edges a little bit because they were that cardboard looking color and you know you'll be able to see them so we're going to paint them we have to be extra if we're going to be a little extra we have to be extra all the time just paint a good coat over that so we kind of seal the edges of this stencil so when we paint we don't have any bleeding we're going to use this rich black folk art chalk paint one of my favorites and our little dabber I got these dabbers in a large pack variety pack of sponge brushes there were some regular sponge brushes these dabbers all different sizes and I got them at Michaels in a value pack and so I'm really enjoying these now I'm going to lift off the stencil and here's the reveal I love this part not throwing that on the floor I do have a trash can down there just saying that for my anybody that's watching for the first time I love it see my little excitement there I love when there's no bleeding let me get my little tweezers I'm telling you I cannot craft without tweezers they are a must 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 for me so getting all those little pieces out so I've got this ball of greenery when I was doing a baby shower last year and so I cut off a strand and I'm just going to wrap it around and make a wreath for the top of our house. So I wrapped it around, tried to figure out how I was going to keep it all intact. So I just wrapped the end around the top, put it up there. And I was thinking about a lot of different ways that I could have attached it and made it look really cute. I just decided to go ahead and wrap it around there and uh, tie it around in several places so that it stays together and then I cut those off but I leave the tails of them out a little bit so it makes the wreath look a little bit fuller but I really think this turned out really cute now I think you could take a piece of ribbon and wrap it through there and hang it I know that's really popular and I think that would work really cute but you can see that I'm just tying it around, tying a little knot in it to secure it in several places around. And like I said, I left those little tails of my knot, you know, so that it looked a little fuller. So they kind of stuck out a little bit like a wreath would. Okay, so now, you know, I keep twisting and twisting that thing because I put too much glue on the back, I think. But once it gets glued down, that's remedied. Okay, so now we're going to paint this little wooden heart that I got a whole little tray of assorted ones 
from Michael's last year after Valentine's Day on clearance. And they're oh so pretty. And so I am going to use it in this little project. And I'm putting a little twine bow on top. Okay, let's get this hot glue down. A little hot glue on the top. Hold it down till it dries. I think it's looking really cute. Fluff it up. Put a little hot glue on the bottom just so it doesn't flop around too much. Put a little glue on the heart. Figure out where it's going to go. Play around with it. I could have put a little bit of that twine through and had it dangle. But I kind of liked it just hanging in the middle there. Trying to just position it. Kind of was falling down inside. So there we go. Finished product. First little flip here, I picked up this little decor piece at Goodwill for a dollar and a penny. And I sanded it all down real good. I ended up taking it outside and sanding it with my orbital sander and getting it all sanded down. And I'm using some Aged Gray by Rust-Oleum. And while it's still wet, this is a little bit different technique that I usually use, I'm taking some Ink by Waverly and while the gray is still in my brush, I'm getting just a little bit of that black on there and wiping most of it off and just blending a little bit of that gray. I'm using a real light hand, um, but it's almost like a dark gray with a little bit of black in there. Okay, so I just cut a heart out. I used my Cricut. You could absolutely just cut it out by hand, trace it on there and cut it out by hand to make a little stencil. I taped it on with some masking tape and I'm just pouncing it on with a little sponge pouncer with some red chalk paint. And I don't care if it has super great coverage. I just really want to get around the edges really good so the edges will be crisp. And then I'm going to pull it off and ta-da. Okay, I made this little decal with HTV iron-on uh, vinyl. That's what it is, vinyl. And I'm ironing it on. This method works pretty good. I've never had it fail, and I didn't want to peel off all my nice paint that I'd worked so hard to paint on there. And this doesn't peel off the paint, obviously. And so it worked really good. Now, I lost my two little dots on my 1 Corinthians 3.8, and so I'm going to put them on with a Sharpie. But I love this Love Never Fails, God's Love Never Fails, and we're supposed to be like Christ so we need to always love others like he loves us so I had this spindle in my stash and this is more of a trash to treasure I, but I decided to throw it in because it turned out really pretty and I had that candle jar so this candle jar had a, you know I took all the wax out cleaned it up and I'm using this DIY white wax and I'm just going to layer it on. I'm putting it on and then I kind of let it dry a little bit. And then I put another layer on and let it dry a little bit. And I just kept doing that until I got the look I wanted. I wanted it to look a little bit, I don't know if frosted is the right look I was going for, but I had a look in my head. You know how you just have a look in your head that you're going for and you know when you achieve it. Well, I achieved it. Now I'm just going to paint this little piece of a spindle. I just cut it the length that I wanted it, and I'm, then I'm going to sand it because I want it to be distressed. So I've got my little sanding block, and I'm just randomly sanding some of it off, some of it all the way down to back down to the wood, and some of it not so much. Then I'm going to use the DIY clear wax on the spindle to seal it, and back with my little piece of T-shirt, old white, undershirt of my husband's that I cut up into small pieces to buff with or to clean with or whatever I need it for. And now I'm going to use some E6000 and some hot glue to adhere this spindle to my glass candle jar. I'm going to put it right in the middle. It's easy to see because it's clear. 
and I think this turned out so pretty. Let me know what you think. Okay, here we go on our next stop. This one was a little bit longer. This was a frame that I had picked up at a thrift store a while back. And I have some white lightning cleaner by Dixie Bell. And I cleaned it up really good because it was a little bit grunge. And I'm out on the porch of my craft cottage sanding it with my orbital sander. Now I couldn't get in all the nooks and crannies with that sander and I just didn't want to go to all the trouble to sand it. So I'm just going to give it a few coats. This paint, the first coat just kind of slid around a little bit, but I was patient and I gave it two good coats. So in between the coats of drying, I took my Mod Podge and I just Mod Podged all over this piece of mat board. And I cut this mat board to fit my frame. And then I got this canvas drop cloth that I've been using for years. This big drop cloth I bought at, I believe I got mine, well I've bought them at Home Depot and I've bought them at, on Amazon. I've used them for uh, different projects. But this is the one I've been crafting with. And I should not have ironed that on. I should have used some tacky glue because it would have worked much better. The iron-on uh, Mod Podge didn't work that great. I'm just telling you, it worked okay, but the tacky glue would have worked better to tack it down with. Now I'm using some Dark Wax by DIY, and I'm, I just dry brushed a little bit on there, and, it, and then I let it dry before I used a piece of old t-shirt to buff it because I wanted it to not blend too much. I wanted to be able to actually see that wax on there and then um, I just kept rubbing it so that it would go ahead and seal it and now I'm just trimming off that excess um, drop cloth from that mat I'm kind of all over the place with this project but you're gonna get it so I cover that mat with the drop cloth to put in this frame see and then I'm gonna run some hot glue all around the edges of that to um, put it in there, but not yet. First, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some painters tape on it to hold it in place so that I can uh, see where I'm gonna place my stripe. I'm gonna use this painters tape, and I'm gonna make some. I think it's called a French stripe. I'm not p positive. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's called a French stripe. So I'm gonna use this. I do things a little bit backwards, but I'm gonna use. See how that is wanting to pull up? If I had glued that down, that would have stayed way better. So I just uh, had put that in the frame so I could see the placement because I didn't want my stripes to, you know, be underneath the frame. So that's why I went to that, did that extra step in there. So now I'm just trying to get this tape down straight so my stripes will be straight and not crooked. And all this worth, work was worth it because it it ends up being straight so I just put down a piece of tape and then however wide I wanted my <laughs> oh my gosh I was struggling here I wasn't struggling I just had to do a lot of extra steps that I would not have had to do if I had just glued the canvas down instead of Mod Podged it so now I want that to be an inch wide I want my stripe to be an inch wide so now I'm going to put the next painter's tape down an inch over. And then I'm going to paint it with that same red I painted my frame with. And I'm just using a sponge and just going along those edges and just making a nice thick coat on here. Then I'm just going to pull that tape off. And I'm not going to reuse that because I pulled it up wet and I just put it in the trash. That Dollar Tree Painter's Tape is pretty cheap, so that's what I'm going to do. But now I want this to be a thin stripe, so I'm going halfway in the middle of that masking tape. And I'm just going to make a skinny little stripe on each side of that big red stripe. Now, there's really, I don't know, I do things, like I said, kind of backwards, but it all makes sense to me. So you do it however it makes sense to you. If you choose to do this. So I'm going to make a skinny stripe on each side of that wide stripe. 
This is just how I chose to do it. So I'm just pouncing that paint on there. Okay, now while I'm letting that dry, I've got these little hearts from Dollar Tree. They come multiples in a package. And so I'm gonna paint two of them red and I'm gonna paint two of them white. And I just used a little sponge and pounced it all on there. And hindsight, I should have painted them, well, I'm not sure if I should have painted them differently. I'm not, I don't know. When I went to arrange them on the in the frame, I was kind of confused because I think they should have been different on there. I don't know. You'd let me know what you think. If I should have painted both, okay, here we go. So should I have painted both hearts that had the, you see what I'm saying? Both hearts that have the hearts in them, should they have both been red? No, they should not have been. But now I have them on top of each other. I don't know. I think I overthink things a lot. Um, but anyway, I was just kind of getting the placement there. Now, I'm putting some hot glue down. I'm going to put that mat back in there. And then I'm going to run some hot glue around the edges too to put it in there a little bit more. Now, I'm measuring so I can get all my hearts, get my hearts in order, and then where those little dot circles are in there that we usually fill up with some wood filler if we're not going to string them. I'm going to use those to line them back up. But no worries because we're going to put some little twine bows on top of there to cover up those little holes. And I, this is probably my favorite in this uh, whole video. I absolutely love this frame. I did not take this to my craft booth. I think I'm going to keep it. I had this jar that I picked up and it's it's pretty good size so I'm going to use some Aline's tacky glue love 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 this stuff it's super thick I think it got thick you know during the freeze I've mentioned in previous videos that my it froze you know we had some few nights of freezing weather way down in the teens and a lot of my paints and glues froze some of them survived some of them did not so I have that another one of those white hearts that I painted white and I'm trying to decide if I want to use this red and white baker's twine to wrap around this jar or if I want to use that red uh, twine that's over in the upper left hand corner and I choose the solid red just because it was a little thicker and I don't know I just thought it looked better now I should have puttied up that hole but I do fix it in the end, so all, all ends well. So I'm just going to wrap this red twine around this jar. <laughs> around and around the jar we go. And here we go. I'm going to tighten it up and get it all straight. And I think this is super cute. I saw something similar maybe on Etsy or somewhere like that. They were small jars, and I think she used burlap, and it was a different kind of heart or something, so I thought, oh, I'm gonna see if I can create that with that big jar I have. So, I should have probably posted a picture of hers, but mine looks totally different than hers. So, I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do with these strings, and I wanted a bow on there, but I couldn't figure out where. It didn't look right when I put it over the hole. So, I had some white, white putty and I just put some white putty over that hole with an, a tin that I got some tea in and I always keep this stuff because I'm a hoarder and I'm just going to take a sandpaper block and just give this lid just a little bit of sanding so that the paint will adhere a little bit better. I mixed up some paint that I thought would match um, the paper that I'm going to use around the base. You can see the paper over on the left and I didn't have any red that matched perfectly so I just mixed a few. You can see over there on the right I mixed a few colors together uh, to match. Now I'm using Aline's Tacky Glue and I just squeezed some out on this paper because it's very hard to get out 
of the bottle and I'm just painting it on the tin and smoothing down this adorable vintage scrapbook paper. I got it Hobby Lobby. Had it in my stash for a while. I did it all the way around and just smoothed it down with that little squeegee. Now I'm taking this Mod Podge and I'm putting it over the paint so that it doesn't scratch off. I did two, maybe three coats of paint um, on this, on the metal part. Turned out really pretty. Okay, then I have a little knob that I had in my stash. I'm not sure why I'm showing you all the little details of the Mod Podge. You all know how to put Mod Podge on your projects. Okay, had this little knob that was in my stash. Have no idea where it came from or what it came off of. It's just, you know, some of that junk that I keep. And I'm trying to figure out which drill bit is the right size to drill a hole in the top because we're going to make this a little knob on top. And then I'm going to put my little, try to find the center. I eyeballed it. Then I decided I better get my measuring tape out and make sure. And guess what? It was I did pretty good. It was pretty close. So then I drilled the hole in the center. And I took my little spatula. I kind of mashed that down a little bit, which isn't really going to matter if it's smooth because we're going to have that knob. We'll cover it up. Then I had to use a lot of little washers and a bowl not a bolt uh, yeah not a bolt a nut okay spit it out um, on there to take up some space because my bolt was too long and I just used stuff that I had in my stash I didn't want to go buy anything so I had all that in my little I have a little caboodle that has a lot of bits and pieces in it and there you go look how cute and adorable it is but just to make it a little more vintagey and a little more you know me I decided I was going to use some of this cotton lace that I had in my stash from Dollar Tree and I love this I found it and I bought several rolls of it because I love this little ribbon I started putting my glue on the lid and doing this and then I decided it was easier it made more sense to put the glue on the ribbon part and <clears throat> excuse me put it down so that's what I did all the way around the top oh, had a little bit of something on there then I used my little vacuum to clean it up I'll link that little vacuum in the description box below because it's USB charged instead of batteries and it's amazing I had the butter I mean the ladybug one for a couple years and it was great it's great too but I love this one even better made a little bow glued it on there and this is done how easy was that and how cute is this little vintage tin let me know what you think about this one these are a couple of the smaller tags or medium sized tags we'll call them from Dollar Tree I had these in my stash but they have them every year and we are going to use the back side so the front side I'm just going to cover with some of this um, craft paper wrapping paper whatever you want to call it you can cover it with whatever you want or if you want to sand all that glitter off or take the time to wet that and peel it off however you decide to use these um, Dollar Tree pieces is up to you and then you can sand this off if you want but I find it much easier to just use your exacto knife unless you have a little glue that seeps out then it's a little more difficult but I just cut right through the glue and voila sometimes there's a little piece of it that will come up just stick a little more glue under there and press it down we're good to go so I did that to both of them and then after I do that then I'm gonna put a little bit of this wood filler you could use spackling whatever you have on hand and I do it after I cover the back so then it doesn't keep going all the way through then I'm just gonna sand it down smooth and then I'm gonna give it oh, I'm gonna vacuum up all my little crumbs with my little vacuum cleaner middle tabletop vacuum cleaner it's so handy and then I'm gonna take some white chalk paint this is I believe it's rust-oleum I buy it in a, a you know quart size and then I put it in these little containers because it dries out really quick if you keep opening the container and sometimes I have to water this one down to get it you know back to consistency so I did um, 
I think I just did one coat on each one of these and now I'm taking this um, I mixed this these cut this color because um, the color that I loved got ruined when my paints froze in the craft cottage and then I'm taking some antique wax with this chippy brush and I mean I'm using a really light hand and dry brushing it just do it however much you want then I'm taking my scrap of old t-shirt and I'm rubbing it down really good and it gives it a really nice finish when you do that it just smooths it out I cut this be mine decal out on my Cricut and I'm just going to place it on one of these tags I use the typewriter font because I think it looks vintage looks a little old-fashioned vintage like me I remember when this was the style unfortunately I'm that old I'm just gonna glue these two together put a good amount of hot glue there so it will stick and the hot glue will hold it good because we put that paper on the back and then I have this little vintage Valentine look how adorable it is and yes um, these were the kind of Valentines that I gave my friends when I was little and look I just dropped it in the glue no worries we just wipe it off I could have edited that out but I want y'all to see that yeah I'm pretty clumsy using the Aline's tacky glue I just squeeze a little bit out I like to apply it with a paintbrush so we don't have any globs it's all nice and smooth you get a nice smooth finish on the back and then I'm just gonna glue it down here sometimes I use the little squeegee but this pressed out really nicely now if you wanted to you could Mod Podge over top of it but I didn't feel the need to I didn't show you that I made that bow I just laid out a bunch of ribbons and tied them together okay our next DIY this one was super fun I really enjoyed it I cut a bunch of skewers these were the long ones so they were a little fatter I made myself a template with a heart and I traced around it and I made the lines pretty nice and dark and thick and made sure that I could see them on each one of the skewers and I put it on this uh, painters tape so that they would all stay in place and then I'm taking these miter shears and they were key to this DIY and then I'm cutting on the angle of every one of these and then taping it putting it, it back down on the tape in order so that I don't lose my shape and get all confused because it doesn't take much to confuse this blonde see you can already tell I put the that piece on upside down okay so I'm not going to show you every single cut but I'm going to show you a few to get started and then I'll show you how I did those at the top but this was super easy these miter shears cut through these really easy sometimes some of them were a little more difficult and I just put the end of the miter shear on the table and smash with my top hand I'm not sure why I put that up higher not a lot of rhyme or reason to some of the things I do they did kind of go flying all over the table but anyway so I just kept going up pick one up it really was pretty fast I did speed this up so this is in fast motion but it really went pretty fast and here you just cut that piece lay it down then cut the other side and just lay them out then I cut a template for the back side to glue them to keeping them on here so I can kind of keep myself straight I'm gonna get back to that Aline's tacky glue making sure it fits because I have been known to it not to fit so I'm just gonna put a bunch of that glue on there with the paintbrush I'm gonna smear it all out so I get a nice even coat and this stuff if you've never used it it's amazing it is super sticky now I'm gonna glue these on and then I decide of course I'm gonna use my handy dandy tweezers I decide that I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each one in between so they kind of stick to each other as well because I don't really want these going anywhere and then I put a little bit on another piece of paper so that I can have enough to put in between them and then my paintbrush kept sticking to everywhere I laid it I was kind of a hot mess but once I got the hang of what I was doing this part went pretty fast too this was really an easy and fun DIY and it turns out really cute so I'm trying to keep my um, edges all kind of lined up 
and you just match up the angles on the edges that you cut and just keep gluing them down. Up at the top, you just put the glue down, glue them. Second verse, same as the first. Ta-da! And I did put a little bit of glue on top. Then I put some pink paint. This was, I don't even know, this was the one I got from, from Michael's. It was in one of those, um, I don't even remember the brand name of that, but anyway, any kind of pink paint that you like will work for this. And you're really not going to see that cardboard much, but I did go ahead and paint it. And I just gave this one really nice coat of paint. And then I took, I think this is, I don't know, territorial beige maybe. I don't know. It's a light brown. You know, just use whatever colors you like. Whatever colors suit your fancy. I just look at my paints and decide what I'm going to use. So I just kind of dirtied it up a little bit, made it look a little bit old. And then I wanted a few little highlights on it. So I took this, maybe this is the territorial beige. I don't know, warm buff. I think this is warm buff. And I just dry brush it on there a little bit. As much or as little as you want. Maybe you wouldn't want to do that at all. Okay, I've had this in my stash a while too from Dollar Tree. And I just dismantled all the little pieces to it. And I'm not worried about that being rough there. And then I measured. Then I, look, I didn't. I measured from the one to the six, so it was five, and I didn't measure it right, so I had to go back and cut some more. That's the story of my life. But I just used the glue stick, and I'm making sure it fits because, you know, measurements are not really my thing. My husband doesn't really come out to the craft cottage to help me. If he's in, when I had the craft room in the house, I could just holler at him, and he would come help me with measurements, but this was an easy measurement. I'm being silly, but okay. Glue stick, glue it down. Easy peasy. Get my little squeegee because I love that. It helps spread that glue underneath really well. Glue that down. I love the fact that the gold frame matched perfect with that little bit of gold that was in the scrapbook paper. And then I'm going to take one of those tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, glue it to the back of this heart glue the heart to the center of this frame and really that's all you would have to do but I wanted to make it a little more vintagey is that a word vintagey you can just add Y to any word as far as I'm concerned and some going back to this beautiful soft cotton lace ribbon and I used to do this more like in the 90s to all my picture frames I would put a bow and lace and little baby's breath and everything on my frames like this when I've crafted in the early 90s 90s oh man I sound like I'm from the south um, anyway I digress I'm so distracted so I'm just gonna you can see what I'm doing I have to explain to you what I'm doing um, I think this makes it look a little more vintage shabby chic maybe. I'm a, I'm a shabby chic girl all the way. I love it. That's my, my style. More country shabby chic rather than Victorian shabby chic though. Uh, I like that too though. I just, I like shabby chic. So then I'm going to glue the little bow on there. It was just a simple little bow I made with two little loops. Um, I usually do the little finger bows on my finger. But I don't want to waste time showing you that because we have better, cuter things to make. So let me know what you think about this one. I think you should definitely try the skewer heart. Okay, this next one was something I had picked up at a garage sale when we were in Oklahoma. I got this thing for 25 cents, y'all. And I just took all these letters off and... I did not need this for a classroom, so I took all these letters off. They were really easy to get off, but I'm so scared when I'm doing this that it's going to give way and then I'm going to hurt myself. So I'm always really careful. I've hurt myself plenty of times in the past, so I tend to be a little more careful now. Because, um, you know, if, I, if that gives way and then 
bam, it hits my other hand. That would hurt. Okay, so I took them all off. Then I took it outside and used my little orbital sander and took all that off. It was really quick. Then here I've mixed this color. Okay, and I did tape off the sides because it's MDF. The front looks like real wood, but it is, it is MDF. And I didn't want that paint to get on the sides. I wanted it to stay. Now I mixed this paint and it got darker as it dried. And I was really a little disappointed in that. But it turns out okay in the end, I think. See how dark it got? And then, well, and then I did just try to distress it a little with a little bit darker, which I should have gone lighter. I don't know. I just start second guessing myself. But then I Mod Podge this because if you ever know about MDF, you can't you can't dust it. So I put the Mod Podge on to help with that. Now I'm giving the front a complete coat of Mod Podge because we're gonna put some little vintage Valentines on. Oh, my aunt went gave me a bunch of all her art supplies because she's giving up some. She's an artist and she's she's retiring from it. And this, she had a bunch of cards, and these little vintage Valentines were in there. And they just remind me of my childhood. And I love them. And so I thought this was perfect. They were the perfect, these little squares were the perfect size for these little Valentines. And I just love them. So I'm doing the iron-on method. If you're not familiar with that, it is the perfect way to Mod Podge. I used to detest Mod Podge but not anymore. So you could see me there trying to figure out what I was gonna do with it because I wasn't really um, not sure what to do at that point. So I decided to sand over it, distress it a little bit because the background was a little dark. So then I took some white and just kept adding a little white here and there, rubbing it off. Uh, you know, I already have that Mod Podge on so it's hard to dry brush onto, the, onto it when the Mod Podge is on there because it's a slick slicker surface so I just kept working with it working with it until I got it to where I liked it and then I start thinking okay do I want to put this I, I wanted this on there so bad didn't work didn't like it then I tried this twine Nah, just didn't didn't really like it I thought about putting some red on it but the red was not the right color red I was trying to still keep the vintage vibe then I thought okay well this looks a little bit um, kind of boho-y, vintage-y, that era a little bit. So this is what I went with. And I really wasn't liking how those um, little indentions in between the squares looked. So this helped with that. So I really liked how this looked in the end. Just made some little bows and put them on the ends and the corners. And in this picture, it looks really kind of mustardy orange, but it turned out it turned out cute in the end okay that's what counts okay so I have had these in my stash this is a painter stick one of the big ones and I've had these little wood planks in my stash I got them in a pack at Ross do not pass up the craft section at Ross you can find good stuff over there the paintbrush I'm using I found over there okay so I mixed up this paint to match that printable that I showed you I googled free vintage Valentine printables and there was a whole slew of them y'all beautiful ones and I just found some that I liked and printed them out on my printer and they printed out really pretty and so I'm giving all three of these pieces front back sides all around a, a good coat of that now I've seen a lot of my friends on YouTube fellow DIYers use this method to rip and I didn't get it wet enough so I had to keep going back and, you know, re-wetting it a little bit more. But just to tear the edges. And I love it. This is genius. Um, so that's what I did to both of these little... Um, they're, I think they were... I don't know if they're Valentine's or postcards or something. But anyway, whatever they are. These little images. We'll just call them images. And I think they're very vintage and very pretty and very shabby chic. And then now I'm going to distress a little bit because it just looks too clean. You know, we don't like it to look too clean. Well, if you like it to look clean, then just don't do this step. And then I will put that uh, card on there to see, you know, where it is and 
card's gonna cover up the center so we don't need to do too much there. Then I took a lighter color and added a little bit of the lighter to it and you know, just keep going back and forth till you till you like it. Oh, then I guess, oh, here we go with the Mod Podge. I always put the lid there so when I'm doing the voiceover, I can remember what I'm doing. Okay, here's the Mod Podge. I, buy it by the, I bought a gallon of it over two years ago, and I'm still using that gallon. I haven't even used half of it. I just put it in this smaller plastic container and use it as I go. Now I'm going to do the iron-on method again. That Mod Podge is completely dry when we do this, and the heat from the little uh, iron, you can use a regular iron, no steam, with some parchment paper, reactivates the glue. And there's no wrinkles. It's perfectly smooth and beautiful. And you could do another layer of Mod Podge on top if you feel like it's necessary to seal it. But I don't like the streaks that Mod Podge leaves. And now we're just gonna glue these. I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue and a little bit of the, uh, what is it? Super glue wood glue that you get at Dollar Tree and glue those down. I don't want the wood glue. I mean, the wood glue is gonna help it um, to adhere really good because both of these are wood pieces. And then I'm just gonna make a cute little hanger at the top with this beautiful satin ribbon that matches the color. Um, I did drill a hole in the top of that. I didn't show that on camera because, you know, it's not rocket science to drill a, drill a hole. And you just make the hanger however long you want. Tie a knot in the top. And this is done. And it turned out so pretty. I think I'm probably going to keep this for myself. I may take it to the craft booth and price it where if somebody really wants it, they're going to have to pay for it. And if it doesn't sell, I'll bring it home. I think this turned out. Oh, yeah. And I did put those little, you know, <laughs> those little... That little ribbon that I absolutely love. I forgot that I put those little bows on there. So yeah, love, love, love it. Let me know if you like this one. And when I took the pictures, that paint really, yeah, it looks more true to color in that picture. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. Please let me know if you plan to recreate any of them for your home decor this year. Thank you, God bless you, and have a great day. But most of all, remember to be still and know that He is God.